up and nowhere to go. Except maybe jail. Indeed, he is out of here and maybe into there in the coming weeks. We'll just have to see. Hello, friends. Welcome in to this, the 159th edition of Fusebox, enrichingly entitled Flake Factory And, uh, we're gonna toss some flakes. Let me tell you. Yeah, so strap in. I'm your 100% gluten-free host, Mark Rose, and over there, eating cereal right out of the box because that's just how he rolls. Is the monarch of the meters. Milk canes, everybody. (laughs) Thank you kindly. So are you as relieved as I am on this whole... uh, Transition thing? Yeah. Yeah, I am. It was just starting to get on my one surviving nerve. Well, I mean, we knew Orange Guy was going to be a poor loser, right? We saw that coming the day he took office. Yeah, you know, you could say that was the one thing he made good on. I say, you know, I got to, this transition has been ridiculous. A national embarrassment, at the uh, very least. The rest of the world must be thinking, what the hell just happened? After they finish laughing. Yeah, we got big-time credibility issues to fix. This is uh, this is for sure. That orange moron is still trying to dismantle everything he can before he gets his Cheeto-colored ass booted out the door. And there is a raging pandemic going on still. And it's even worse than it was when it first started back in March, which is uh, nine months ago as we record this. Um, Some, well, let's just say misguided folks, uh, still wanting to believe it's a hoax cooked up by the uh, deep state or whatever. Talk to a doc much? Well, they'll tell you stories that'll put the fear of the vid in you. Indeed they will. Of course, these folks will tell you that the docs and the nurses and the whole medical machine is in on the hoax, and they're just playing along. Yeah, it's a real easy game to play, man. Kind of like saying, if I don't win the election, it's rigged. And you know what else is a byproduct of this uh, conspiracy thing? Giant manis aliens sitting in your barca lounger eating pretzels. (laughs) No, at least not yet, anyway. <laughs> no, the thing I'm uh, seeing is that, uh, and, and and I mean this in all seriousness, conspiracy theories are actually valuable at times, right? They've been proven to be true, like the one about the uh, intelligence agencies uh, <laughs> spying on its own citizens. Mr. Snowden helped to uh, illustrate that one quite clearly, I think. It's a real deal. What I'm wondering is, If all these recent uh, grand falloons, as Kurt Vonnegut used to say, if they're not contributing now to what could become uh, an air of just patent disbelief for all theories that tend to be uh, on the fringes of things. I mean, crazy or not, we would give at least a a, a beat or two uh, acknowledgement in the past, but... uh, I really wonder going forward if if that'll ever be the case now. Good question. Folks may be just queuing on out for a while. I mean, even I was getting fed up with some of these batshit crazy claims. And you know, I love me some good conspiracy theories. Yeah, I know that about you. And like you say, sometimes they're actually true. Does happen. I mean, you know, there was that whole conspiracy theory about Utah actually being a real place. Well, that's just crazy talk right there. And uh, when we return, we'll talk flakes. With a capital stupid. Stick around. Sounds fantastic, doesn't it? TheFuseBoxShow.com
And speaking of cringe-inducing flakatoids, uh, listen to the very animated and thoroughly delightful overview from uh, Keith Olbermann here regarding our first flake du jour. I call upon the United States House of Representatives to begin procedures to hold General Services Administration head Emily Murphy in contempt of Congress. I call upon the House to subpoena her to appear before them to explain immediately her refusal to issue the ascertainment that is required to formally begin the Biden presidential transition. I call upon the House to tell Administrator Murphy that any further delay after tomorrow will result in her contempt case being referred to the Department of Justice on January 21st of next year and that she will be prosecuted executed to the full extent of the law. Enough of this. Last Thursday, the chairwomen of the House Oversight and Appropriations Committees wrote to Emily Murphy and asked her to appear before them today, Monday, and explain what the hell she was doing. She did not appear. Instead, the GSA advised the committee chairs that a deputy administrator, not Murphy, would brief the chairwomen and the ranking Republican members of each committee next Monday the 30th. The committee chairs have since written Murphy back, insisting she appear tomorrow. This is all not merely wrong, it is criminal. Murphy is self-dealing. Murphy previously lied to Congress when Trump wanted to cancel moving FBI headquarters so the building would not become a hotel that would rival his own hotel. And now ABC News has reported that while publicly, Murphy is insisting there is no conclusive evidence that Biden has won and Trump has lost, privately, she's already sent a message to a colleague, which ABC has seen, in which Murphy asked for leads and help getting a new job. She is doing all this, inserting herself into the wheels of American government to literally freeze a nation and humor a psychopathic lame duck so that she doesn't piss off any other Trump cultists who might hire her and so that for all her potential new employers, she doesn't have to admit Trump fired her. This is how sick this individual is. Screw the nation. I need a good reference. (laughs) Man. Oh, Keith needs to watch the blood pressure thing, bro. I mean, uh... <laughs> you know, I think Keith is just doing Peter Finch from the movie uh, Network. That's what he's doing there. I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. Yeah. Yeah, but I love it just the same. So uh, let's start, shall we? With the head of the General Services Administration and giant todes of delay and obfuscation... Dear Emily Murphy, now this character sat on the letter of ascertainment, a document that states that the transition process can now begin and the uh, president-elect can now get access to certain federal funds and other resources. Well, she uh, first did nothing to hasten this process, claiming that the votes were not uh, certified in many areas and that uh, there were legal rulings yet to be either filed or decided on. Well, if we want to be fair here, we could give her that. We could, yes. Of course, it still wasn't helping or addressing the fact that uh, the longer the delay, the more folks were surely going to die from this COVID-19 plague, and that certain national security interests were being compromised as well, but... uh, Be that as it may. After a uh, further letter from the Biden camp there requesting access, the response was that they should be able to let them speak with a deputy director in about a week, which would have put that at November 30th. So, yeah, no. Here's my lackey. Talk to the hand. (laughs) In essence, yeah. Uh, as it turned out, and as uh, Keith reports there, Miss Murphy was endeavoring to get a job during this time, and it would look so much better on her resume there if the orange guy hadn't fired her first. Well, she turned it around, of course, and everybody finally has uh, let the process start. Uh, She said that she was under a lot of pressure to move on that, like, Death threats and shit. Yeah, that was reported. And it was also stated by her that uh, her decision to delay was not in any way influenced at all by the White House. Yeah, I got some beachfront property in South Dakota for sale, too. 
<laughs> Needless to say, the gears grind ever onward here. I got to add that in the letter from the GSA uh, opening up the process for transition, it states that, quote, <laughs> Mr. Biden, not president-elect, is the, quote, apparent winner. Passive-aggressive bitch. It is a wee sarcastic. But uh, as we know, flakes get soggy in liquid. So if we could, uh... What are you doing with that water? Stop with the water. Don't... No, don't, don't, don't. Yeah. Oh, and our next candidate is a walking fruit and nut bar of the highest order. Lawyer and winner of the Miss Pinwheel Eyes of 1987, Sidney Powell, former attorney for Michael Flynn. You remember him, convicted of lying to Congress and the FBI and a whole barge full of other people. Recently pardoned by the orange one, naturally. Well, Miss Powell holds an all-time record for craptastic conspiracies. Well, for instance... Massive influence of communist money through Venezuela, Cuba, and likely China in the interference with our elections here in the United States. And then there was the smash hit. It can set and run an algorithm that probably ran all over the country to take a certain percentage of votes from President Trump and flip them to President Biden, which we might never have uncovered had the votes for President Trump not been so overwhelming in so many of these states that it broke the algorithm that had been plugged into the system. And how could we forget? The Dominion voting systems, the Smartmatic technology software, and the software that goes in other computerized voting systems here as well, not just Dominion, were created in Venezuela at the direction of Hugo Chavez to make sure he never lost an election after one constitutional referendum came out the way he did not want it to come out. Yeah, this is some uh, creative stuff, especially the part with a uh, very dead Venezuelan president, Hugo Chavez, Somehow, at the heart of it all. And, of course, Jews. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you can't forget George Soros. He's got to be in there. Benghazi. <laughs> Emails. <laughs> now, what made this particularly damning for her was uh, when she got on a roll there, she implicated through, of course, again, unproven accusations that the Republican governor of Georgia, Brian Kemp, was somehow also involved in this ballot fraud in his state. <laughs> it's kind of like that moment when Joe McCarthy went a wee bit too far in his uh, investigations of, uh, quote, un-American activities and accused then-President Harry Truman of certain shenanigans. Kind of feel the air being sucked out of the room. Well, Miss Powell was left flopping around by the side of the stream a day later. <laughs> And didn't they say she was uh, not part of the Trump legal team and that she was just uh, practicing on her own? Yeah, I imagine she <laughs> had something set up like a courtroom in her basement, you know, where she's got cut out jurors and she can make wild accusations all day long about giant mantis aliens in leisure suits with bad haircuts selling fake watches. Hey, sport, you want to buy a watch? Oh, but wait, she's more. Tell me it ain't so. It is indeed not, not so. She went on to poot even more wondrous and unproven crap, like when asked about the evidence on Fox News, of all places, she claimed it was going to be a virtual kraken of evidence, of biblical proportions, she claimed. Now look, the uh, squid fancier in me was all a bit a Twitter... With the uh, prospect of a virtual squid of destiny. <laughs> Alas, no squid or kraken or even a deflated and partially desiccated sea cucumber of evidence was or has 
at least to this point, been revealed or otherwise unfurled. Yeah, sure seems like a lot of dead people are doing a whole hell of a lot of things in this past election. They're they're voting and they're creating software to rig the ballot. <laughs> oh, that was that that was another wonderful moment. Um, I don't know if you saw this. Safe bet I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, they of course have filed uh, the Trump folks have filed uh, lawsuits in Michigan, of course, claiming there were huge ballot irregularities. Well, just look at these right here. These votes right here, they did not count. They did not count these in Michigan. Why? Why didn't they count these, huh? Why, huh? What do you say to that, Mr. Smarty Pants? Huh? Huh? Well, what we say is that those uh, cities in question would indeed be irregularities, all right, because they're actually located in Minnesota, not in Michigan. And to include those here is just harebrained. So get off my lawn. You know what? Uh, way back in uh, fuse box number 127, Psycho Relic Con Job, you, uh, you brought up the way Captain Queeg's character in Kane Mutiny, played by uh, Humphrey Bogart, it's kind of like Trump. Paranoid, delusional. And is damn sure somebody stole his strawberries. Ah, but the strawberries, that's that's where I had them. They laughed at me and made jokes. But I proved beyond the shadow of a doubt and with, with geometric logic th- that a duplicate key to the wardrobe ice box did exist. And I'd have produced that key if they hadn't pulled the cane out of action. Uh, I know now they were only trying to protect some fellow officer. And- yeah. Well, it looks like they all got Queen syndrome on this team. Well, you know, they asked Ms. Powell how many people would have to be involved in this thing, the voter fraud and uh, election rigging or whatever. And she said, oh, gosh, uh, probably uh, thousands, including the people running the machines at each of the poll polling centers. We know, for example, that one of the higher ups of Dominion went to Detroit the night of the election to, to handle things himself. And we also have evidence that there were any number of uh, VPN lines open to the internet for foreign actors to be meddling in it. This gal is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Have you ever tried to keep a secret between even 10 people? Impossible. Impossible. So thousands of folks involved in this without one peep from anyone is a, is a, is a kind of fiction that's probably best left for a Penguin Pocket Edition. I mean, the tsunami of distancing that washed over after that ill-fated QAnon on acid press conference was amazing. Well, every damn lawyer I've ever talked to says that if you have evidence, you don't wait till a court date to reveal it. It's called the discovery process, and it's an ongoing thing of sharing that shit. You, you actually can't hold on to it. Yes, but Mr. Keynes, they are still compiling at this very moment the massive Matterhorn of evidence, complete with Kraken and biblical references. Giant squid sold separately. (laughs) And you got Rudy Giuliani there literally melting during that press conference, black hair dye running down his face and cold turkey sweating. Yeah, we got flies on Mike Pence, black goo coming down the sides of old Rudy's face, which, uh, Actually, just might be dead giant mantis alien blood. Maybe the insect died inside him there and is uh, kind of seeping through. Just saying. So ain't we got flakes, friends. But you know, speaking of monoliths, <laughs> nice. we've got a wondrous item here uh, sent to us by Jody Lorimer, who always has a Third eye open for the things on the quivering fringe. Remember uh, 2001, A Space Odyssey? Sure. Uh, The apes and that giant black monolith thing that had uh, something to do with evolution or knowledge or something. I can't recall it very clearly, though. We were doing some crazy-ass mescaline back in those days, and I... (laughs) Yeah, well, uh, the monolith is uh, of uh, particular relevance here because, uh, friends... A strange object has been discovered in a remote part of Utah. Were there apes? No, 
but uh, one of the rangers was a bit hairy. Now, now the, this particular news item has since been covered uh, pretty in-depth since it uh, appeared. We usually try to stick to the under-the-radar news items, but in this case, a follow-up uh, of information proved fa- uh, pretty fascinating. So um, I'm going to go ahead with this. So as it goes, uh, quoting from the original uh, Guardian story here, a uh, mysterious monolith has been discovered in a remote part of Utah after being spotted by state employees that were counting bighorn sheep from a helicopter. Now that right there, that's the job to have. Of course, you run the risk of falling asleep and falling out of the chopper, but... You know, I saw what you did there. You know, I thought for a second that it was too hip for the room. This room? (laughs) (laughs) Continuing on here, the uh, structure, estimated at between 10 feet and 12 feet high, appeared to be planted in the ground. It was made from some sort of really shiny metal, a vivid contrast to the enormous red rocks which surrounded it. Now, I've got a uh, link to this story in the show notes if you care to actually see this thing because there's some video that accompanies. Uh, Utah's Highway Patrol shared images of both the sheep and the monolith. Very thoughtful of them. Were the sheep involved? I mean, were they like throwing bones into the air that turned into spaceships? So that was about the time the mescaline kicked in for you? Is that what? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was the day before, actually. It was still working. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a ride you can't wait to get off of, right? <laughs> Uh, Continuing on here from the Guardian story, the uh, helicopter pilot, Brett Hutchings, told local news channel KSL-TV, That's been about the strangest thing I've come across out here in all my years of flying. Hutchings was flying for the Utah Department of Public Safety, which was helping wildlife resource officers count bighorn sheep in the south of the state. One of the biologists is the one who spotted it, and we just happened to fly directly over the top of it. He was like, whoa, 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 turn around, turn around. And I was like, what? And he's like, there's this thing back there. We've got to go look at it. Hutching said the object looked man-made and appeared to have been firmly planted in the ground and uh, not dropped from the sky. I'm assuming it's some new way of artist or something. Or, you know, somebody that was a big 2001 A Space Odyssey fan, Hutching said. The monolith and its setting resembled a famous scene from Stanley Kubrick's 1968 film in which a group of apes encounter a giant slab. The somewhat monkey-like behavior of the two crew members, dressed in sci-fi costume-like overalls, who found themselves compelled to climb onto each other's shoulders in an apparent effort to see over the top of the rectangular cuboid, only added to the impression. We were kind of joking around that if one of us suddenly disappears, then the rest of us make a run for it, Hutching said. What if that did happen, though? (laughs) Well, then... We'd uh, have the makings of another found footage film, and we'd probably be doing something like 2020, the Utah Art Installation Odyssey, complete with mountain sheep and requisite shaky cam. Yeah. Some observers compared the monolith to the plank sculptures of artist John McCracken, who uh, lived in New Mexico and New York until his death in 2011. McCracken's gallerist... David Zwerner did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Artist Liam Sharp summed up the people's fascination with this tweet. I love this. I imagine it's an art piece. But what if it isn't? It's a good thing those guys didn't post the actual location of this thing. They have a mess on their hands for sure, although I'm sure there's a bunch of people looking at Google Earth. Yeah, and a whole lot of angry sheep. Get your own monolith and get off my playa. Well, there has been an update on this story as well. Turns out that uh, this exact area, albeit remote, uh, has been used countless times for filming TV and film projects, the most recent one being the Westworld series for HBO. 
So it's been speculated that uh, maybe this thing might have been a project of one of the special effects crew, a little part-time after-hours project. Oh, that'd be great. Until the giant manis aliens come back and use it to phone for backup. <laughs> and with that monolithic message from beyond space and time and Utah... We pack up our waterlogged box of used flakes and assorted dead foreign guys and uh, squeeze back under the dishwasher, but not before thanking our contributors to this edition of Fusebox, Keith Olbermann, whose daily YouTube commentary can be seen at the location right there in the show notes. Highly recommended that, right there. Mm -hmm. Thanks also to the vocal stylings of the lovely and talented Aaron Lane for ID Proclamation. Thanks, as always, to the ever-flakeless master of the meters, Milk Keynes, for technical assistance and so forth. My pleasure as always. And, uh, don't take any wooden monoliths. <laughs> Sage advice, friends. Also good advice is to uh, subscribe to this very program if you have not otherwise done so. It's fast, it's free, and it makes life just a little easier as the content just shows up magically. You don't have to do a monolith-licking thing. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. You can subscribe wherever you have found it, be it Apple Podcasts, Google, and Amazon Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or the very OnSug themselves at O-N-S-U-G dot com been fun and delightful, friends. Thanks again for tuning in. And I have been your officially certified as official host, Mark Rose, saying until our next cartoon. Fuse.